turbo comparison between Garrett G Series and a Borg Warner EFR. So, in an ideal world, we'd like to have done this with a G25 550, but at the minute, they're basically impossible to get hold of. So, who knows when we'll be able to um, get one of those on film again. But from the outside, it's exactly the same as this G3660. So, realistically, to look at them on the bench, they're basically the same, you know, as a G25. It's just the, the turbine and compressor sizes that are different. And obviously there's some small differences in the turbine housing you know aesthetically because it's a you know it's a different size for a different size wheel but again realistically they look the same so we've done other comparisons but we haven't actually done anything that's direct comparison on kind of v-band v-band setup so v-band in v-band out open scroll your kind of uh bog standard type aftermarket turbo upgrade most setups revolve around a v-band in v-band out outside of twin scroll stuff which is obviously all t4 so the first thing with these is that this efr is an, an alloy core version obviously they sell them as two different kinds of turbo they, they do sell it with an alloy core and they sell it with an iron core the g series you can only buy that with a iron core so from a weight perspective there is quite a lot of difference it's about two and a half kilos um, between these two turbos which is quite a lot really um, and if you're talking about a twin setup obviously that's like five kilos and in terms of again hanging that weight off a manifold and reliability the lighter the better um, you know again two and a half kilos is, is quite a lot it's it's, re it's really considerable so you really would you know it, it's quite an advantage that they do sell them with an alloy core they're not terribly you know they're not a lot more expensive um, but if, again most people I think when they get into these kinds of levels um, they're spending this kind of money a bit more maybe 10% more for an alloy core it's not what you would consider it's not what I would consider to be expensive really looking at the compressor covers aesthetically they're very different they are actually you know, they do actually have totally different features again this one's a g3660 so this is a 660 compressor wheel which is a 67 millimeter so this would be the same as a, a 6758 efr this is a 6258 efr obviously inducer sizes and exducer sizes are different um and that's just down to the actual compressor geometry Again, looking at the compressor wheels, they are very different. It just comes down to really complicated kind of um, aero compressor tech, really. But they both work really well. The EFR obviously has the recirculation valve built into the outside of it, which is a really nice feature. And the boost control solenoid, again, a really nice feature. Just makes it a lot more, a lot easier to install. I mean, on some setups obviously you're not going to be using that you might be using an external four port um, boost control solenoid if you're using an external boost controller on some kind of standalone ecu you might not want to use a built-in recirculation valve you might want a big dump valve or a big blow-off valve but it's there if you need it a lot of setups use it so it's it, it, it's something that you can quite easily take off but you you really can't easily add that kind of oem level of fit and finish they both have speed sensor ports in them. Again, that was something that was added to the G-Series Turbo when they were kind of released. This speed sensor port, which is really crucial on a lot of setups, high horsepower setups or any kind of race car. Um, you know, compressor, compressor wheel speed is something that's uh, very useful in terms of tuning. Obviously the EFR one is drilled and tapped for a boost pressure port as is the G-Series now, they didn't used to be on the GTX, but again, the G-Series, they are now drilled and tapped for that boost pressure port, which is a nice feature. It means you don't have to drill into the side of your brand new turbo, which is what you used to have to do. So now if we flip them over, you can see that they are quite similar in terms of core design now as well. So these are laid out pretty similar. So forgetting that this one's iron and this one's aluminium, and this one's a lot heavier, they both 
have two ports either side for coolant they both come with a built-in restrictor and they both have exactly the same kind of oil return setup which is the two bolt or it's drilled and tapped for like a dash 10 um, style return to be put straight in there slight advantage on the g series ones it does come with a, a dash 6 fitting both sides for coolant some setups won't use that you'll use a banjo um, on a more oem type setup but for anything um kind of high-end aftermarket or a race car you know those uh dash six adapters are really nice so this is one feature which is quite nice and quite confusing in a way is that the g series has a v band to connect the core to the turbine housing the efr has a v band to connect the core to the compressor cover um the V-band is a really nice in terms of how easy it is to just adjust it. It's just one nut. It's like self-tension. They don't really come loose. It's, it's a really nice way of doing things. But it's interesting that they've done it on different sides because it would be really nice if they had V-band both sides, like on a full motorsport turbo. Again, packaging makes it a little more difficult but the g series is really compact i don't know why they've gone for the core clamps on the compressor cover and why bog warner have gone for the core clamps on the turbine housing um all i know is that core clamps on the turbine housing have a a kind of a long history of vi vibrating and rattling loose obviously anything on the turbine side deals with a lot of high flow high flowing gas fast flowing gas and it's hot they heat up cool down heat up cool down go through loads of heat cycles they vibrate a lot sometimes the bolts can come loose it seems like some people get lucky i don't know if that's down to initial installation the kind of thread lock used any of those kinds of things i'm not sure again it's one of those things that you kind of you kind of get a feel for over time the more you do the more experience you have with them you know some people get lucky some people get a feel for it but yeah, the V-band on the turbine housing is definitely a much nicer feature. So yeah, it'd be really nice in the future if we could see a, an, an aftermarket turbo with a V-band on both sides. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like once you've done that initial installation, realistically, you never need to adjust it. But it is a lot nicer. And again, you know, you've got a lot less chance of the, the bolts coming loose. It's just one nut. I mean, you could double nut it if you wanted to. Um, and then it's never going to come loose. Yeah, that's uh, a feature that I probably, in an ideal world, would change. And then on the back sides, or the hot sides, as they're called, we've got the um, turbine housings. So again, these are different sizes. This is a G30, this is a, a 58. So there are obviously a different size turbine wheels. These aren't the ideal turbos to actually compare. Physic, yeah, kind of wheel sizes but we're not really looking at that we're just looking at the actual physicality of them one of the really nice features as a fabricator is the g series turbo has a uh, a female locating ring in it and the borg warner one doesn't that flange sits in there you get a really nice gas seal you don't have to worry that uh, you know you need a gasket or it, it can't blow once that clamps on there there's no chance that that's going to blow purely because of the, the kind of 90 degree angles that gas has got to get out of on the borg warner you don't quite get that so there's no um, female locating flange which means the kind of mating flange to it is also flat which means you need a really flat surface in terms of the actual downpipe flange so that means that again as a fabricator we need to once we've welded that we then need to make sure it gets surfaced perfectly flat to, to create a really nice seal against there and it also makes them a little harder to actually line up on, from an installation um, perspective if we put a clamp on you can kind of see what i mean in that even though you've got a clamp on there they don't kind of automatically just line up So I've got a clamp on here now, but you can see it's still possible to actually push that V-band up, down, in and out. 
Um, so it does make the installation a little bit harder um, because once there's a pipe on here, you can't actually see the inside. So it is quite hard to, to, to line those up um, and, and, you know, and, and make sure that when you clamp it down, it is actually in the middle. Um, it's not the end of the world if they're not in the middle. Obviously, there's plenty of space there with the three inch downpipe or bigger. Um, but it's just something that's much nicer on that garret. Just something as simple as having a, uh, a female locating flange. Obviously, they're both a V-band inlet as well. Um, they've both got female locating flanges. So again, you can just put the flange on and it's a nice, perfect seal. You don't have to worry about trying to get it lined up. Um, one, again, one slight thing with the Borg Warner ones is often the casting doesn't quite line up with the uh, kind of female uh, machining. You can see here, there's actually more material on this side than there is on this side it's just casting imperfections so it's just a, a slight ridge on both sides and with it being a v-band you kind of can't do too much about that it, it would you would be able to just uh, take a little bit of material off there which would you know when you're talking about ultimate efficiency you probably would want to do do that but it, it's not nice that it's, you know, it's an aftermarket turbo, you'd expect to just take it out of the box and be able to use it straight away. I'm sure a lot of people do, but it, you know, it wouldn't hurt to just smooth that out a little bit and get rid of that ridge there. Again, it's something that, you know, you, you don't tend to get on the Garrett ones. Um, they tend to be perfectly smooth all the way around. It's just how it is. So if there's anything else you wanna know, Drop it in the comments. Anything else we could do a video on in the future that you're interested to see, um, just let us know. Thanks for watching.